Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video we're going to take a look at 13 different launchpads. We're going to see how they work, what the contribution is, how much you can expect in return and so forth. Now of course this is going to be a very long video so I put some timestamps in the description of this video so you can jump to the launchpad that you're interested in the most. Now as a quick recap, what is a launchpad? Well, for those of you who have been around since 2017-2018, they all remember the days of the ICO which stands for Initial Coin Offering. Basically, people made a white paper put it online and then asked you to send some Ethereum to a specific Ethereum address. Needless to say, a lot of people got scammed. So basically a launchpad is a service that brings together new projects and investors. So what does a launchpad do? Well, basically they go out and they see if they can find interesting projects. So for the projects themselves, they offer a marketing service and they offer a big community and they offer a way to get funds so they can focus on developing the project. Now, when it comes to the investor, well, for the investor, of course, it is interesting that there's already a selection of projects, so you don't have to go through everything that is being dumped on the market on a daily basis. It also means that the chances of getting scammed are a lot lower than in the ICO days. Of course, never say never, it can happen, especially with new launchpads, it is possible. But with the more established launchpads, you should be, quote unquote, pretty safe. All right, let's get started with the first group, which is the launchpads that have no guaranteed allocation. So basically they work with a whitelist. First up is Polka Starter. Those of you who have been watching the channel for some time, you must know this project already. If you don't, be sure to check out my video on Polka Starter. Either way, Polka Starter was the first launchpad that I got into, and this was earlier this year. The current price of the Pulse token is 2.76. The minimum allocation that you have to take is 250. So basically for $700, you are able to get into the IDO whitelisting. Also important, almost all of the tokens are already in the circulating supply, which means that if the demand for this project stays the same, that the price of the token should more or less be stable as well. Personally, I've been very happy with the quality of the project so far, and especially in the first part of this year, Polka Starter was a very popular launchpad. On the project page, you can see the all-time high returns of the projects that I have launched. You can also see that I have launched a whole bunch of projects. And overall, the results have been very positive. Now, going to the dashboard, we see that we have the option to stake the Pulse tokens. However, this is not required. The only requirement is that you have at least 250 Pulse tokens in your wallet for seven days. If you don't want to wait seven days, then you can lock them up into the staking. And this way, you are automatically eligible for the whitelist. Scrolling down, we see a very handy little table. This gives you the odds of getting into a whitelist. So if you only have the 250 Pulse tokens and you have 5% of getting in, if you have 10,000 Pulse tokens, you have 50% of being selected. Very important to note, the amount of Pulse tokens only increases your chances of being whitelisted once you're whitelisted, whether it's with 5,000 Pulse tokens or 250 Pulse tokens, you will all get the same allocation. From my experience, the average allocation on Polka Starter is between $200 and $500. Another important thing to mention that most of these launchpads, they oversubscribe when they're working with a whitelist. So that means that once you get whitelisted, it will be first come, first serve. Next up, we have Duck Starter. I've also made a video about this project, so check it out if you want more information. Basically, we're also working with the tier system here. The minimum amount that you need to hold is 2000 Duck Tokens. The current price of the Duck Token is 31 cents. Half of the tokens are in uh, circulating supply, so do keep in mind this could put some pressure on the price. However, the current market cap, even the fully diluted market cap, is only 26 million, so that is very small. A few good projects can easily push the price up again. When it comes to the project offering, they have been pumping out a huge amount of different projects, as you can see. Overall, the quality is pretty decent, but I do have to note that the general quality of, for example, Polka Starter is a little bit higher. Looking at the account page, we see that the minimum requirement is 2,000 ducks. If you would do the investment of 100,000 ducks, so $30,000, then you are guaranteed allocation. But everything else is using a whitelist. It's also important to know that you have to lock up your tokens. You can unstake at any time. However, there is a penalty if you unstake within 90 days. As with almost all launchpads, KYC is required. So you have to do KYC before you can apply for the whitelist. It's also important to know that most of the launchpads these days, they don't give you all the tokens at token generation, 
but they will have a vesting schedule as well. This is a good example. So you get 20% when a token launches and then 20% for each month after that. Another cool thing about Duckstarter is that they have a batch system. So usually they have two or three batches. If you're in batch one, then you can be 99% certain that you're getting your allocation. If you're in batch two, which usually starts 10 minutes after, you will have to be really fast and if you're in batch 3 I think you'll have to use a bot or the project is not that popular. One last thing that I want to note for Duckstarter is that there are some projects that don't require you to have a certain tier. So even if you have less than the 2000 tokens there are some projects that do allow you to get allocation. So for example Tryhards they gave allocation to anyone who had one duck token or more and the allocation was already 100 USDC so I think that is a very very decent allocation. Next in line we have the ignition launchpad by paid. The minimum investment is 1000 tokens and at current rate that is $650. Allocation is sadly not guaranteed. You have to lock up your tokens for at least 10 days. This means staking is required, KYC is required as well. So when we take a look at the staking page, we see that the minimum period that you can't access your tokens is 10 days. That's very important, the unstake period is 10 days. So if you lock up your tokens today and you unlock them on the same day, you'll have to wait 10 days before you get them. Now, if you stake your tokens, you can decide them to stake them long term. And this has a few benefits. So first of all, you will be earning interest on your tokens. And second of all, you will be increasing your chances of being selected. When it comes to allocation, it works the same way as it does for Polka Starter. So as soon as you get whitelisted, you get selected and you get into the project, the allocation will be fixed. On average, the allocation size is $150. Now, if you're planning to lock up your token for an extended period of time, for example, one or two years, keep in mind that there are only 20% of the tokens in circling supply right now. So there are a lot of tokens coming on the market and this can create some price pressure. However, it is also important to know that paid network is more than just a launchpad. So if you want to find out more of how the token works and what it's being used for and if there's a burning mechanism and so forth, I recommend that you check out the paid network website and check out the white paper. Next up, we have the launchpad by Polka Foundry, which is called Redkite. Currently, there are a lot of games being launched on this one, but I guess every launchpad is trying to get their hands on some games. The minimum investment for this launchpad right now is about $800. There is no guaranteed allocation, so it works with a whitelist. The minimum lockup is eight days. Staking is required. KYC is required. And yes, there is a way to earn interest. So when we take a look at the staking page, we see there are three options. One that doesn't include the IDO, but it gives you 30% APR. And then the two that we are interested in, a flexible one and a three month one. So if you take the flexible one, you have a 5% APR. If you lock it up for three months, you have 15% APR. So when it comes to lockup period, the minimum is eight days and the maximum, I guess, is three months. When it comes to allocation, on average, in the lowest tier, the allocation is only $50. Number five on the list is Chain Guardians. So Chain Guardians is a game, but they have a launchpad, which is called Chain Boost. So it comes to no surprise that all the projects that you'll find in here are game oriented. When it comes to initial investment, the minimum that you have to do is 500 of their tokens, which right now is about $500. It's a whitelist system, so there is no guaranteed allocation. But if you are selected, then you are certain of your allocation. So it's not oversubscribed like we have with uh, Polka Starter or Duck Starter. The only thing that you have to do is hold the tokens in your wallet so you don't have to lock it up. Staking is not required. However, if you want to participate, then the first thing you'll have to do is KYC. As of right now, the staking program isn't live yet. And when we take a look at this page, I don't think it will be required, but it will help improve your boost score. And the higher your boost score, the higher the chance of being whitelisted. Once you are whitelisted, the allocation will be fixed. So it doesn't matter how many of the tokens you hold. This is the same system as we have with Polka Store. If you are selected, everybody will get the same allocation. On average, the allocation size is $300, which is definitely really good. If you want to find out more about the allocation sizes, just click on the project and you will see what the previous project allocations were. So this one, for example, was $500. So overall, if you're into crypto gaming, I think Chainboost is a really interesting platform. And especially right now, the barrier to entry is pretty low compared to some of the others that we'll take a look at in just a second. When we take a look at the token, we see that less than half of the tokens are in the circulating supply. So keep that in mind. However, the current market cap is only 40 million and the fully diluted market cap is less than 120 million. 
Next up, we have a very popular one, which is Dow Maker. As we can see on the front page, they say venture capital recreated for the masses. Sadly, I think this project is victim to its own success because right now the minimum investment that you have to make is almost $10,000. As we can see right here, it works with a whitelisting system. The minimum lockup period is 30 days, staking is required, KYC is required, and thankfully you will have some interest on the tokens that you are staking. The average allocation size is $200 and it is fixed. So it means it doesn't matter if you have 10,000 tokens or 2,000 tokens, everybody will get the same allocation size if they have a winning ticket. Now, another thing that we'll notice on the front page is that 60% of the circulating supply is locked. This, of course, creates a lot of price pressure on the token itself. And this is probably why the price of the token is so high. We also see that the average days locked is 476, which is insane. On the staking page, we'll get some more information about the APR that we can get. But as you can see, the minimum that you have to invest is 2000 tokens and the minimum that you can stake is 30 days. Scrolling down, we also see that the system of DAOMaker is a little bit unique. When we click on what are the unstake fees, we get a little bit more information. So basically all of the projects, they have a vesting schedule. And if you unstake your tokens before the total vesting is completed, you will lose the tokens that you still have to get. So for example, on day one, you will get 20% of the tokens of the project that you have invested in. And each month after you will get another 20%. So let's just assume that you take that 20% tokens that you get, then you unstake your DAO tokens. Well, then basically you lose 80% of the tokens that you were still going to get in the future. This system, of course, forces people to stake their tokens for a longer period of time. So when we take a look at the projects, we see a good diversity of projects. But of course, right now, Metaverse and gaming are hot. So most of the projects that are being launched right now are in that same niche. Scrolling down even further, we see a little list of completed sales and their results compared to their all time high. Of course, you have to keep in mind that most of the launches have a vesting schedule. So the chances that you're selling all your tokens at all time high are very slim. When we take a look at the token, we see that almost 70 million is in circulating supply. However, this is only 30%. Right now we have a market cap of 300 million. So a fully diluted market cap of 1.3 billion. Personally, I think this is super high. Um, having to pay 10k to get into a launchpad is super high as well. I don't think this is sustainable. And especially because so many tokens are still going to be released on the market, there has to be some price pressure on the price of this token. Next up, we have GameFi. They started out as a guild, but they also have their own launchpad. As you can expect, the full focus is on blockchain gaming. Taking a look at their medium post, we see very clearly how the system works. So the minimum investment that you have to do is 20 GameFi tokens at the current price. That means you have to invest a minimum of $3,200. If you do this investment, then the maximum allocation, so let's just say the average allocation is $60. The minimum time that you have to lock up your tokens is five days. We work with a lottery system, so it's not guaranteed. And this is the same for the different levels except the last one. So just as we had with Duck Starter, there is a legend tier which gives you guaranteed allocation. Personally, when it comes to the launchpad, I think this is overpriced, especially if your allocation is only $60 and it's not even guaranteed. I also noticed that when you take a look at the projects, we see that several of these projects were available on other launchpads as well that had a lower barrier to entry. We see the Sidus one, Solis, we also had this at Red Kite, we had this one at paid ignition and so forth. So yeah, if you're only looking for the launchpad aspect, I think there are better options out there. All right, then it's time for the launchpads with a guaranteed allocation. The first one on the list is TrustHop. Important to know, TrustHop is more than just a launchpad. But let's take a look at the launchpad. The minimum requirement to be eligible for the launchpads is a trust score of 2,500. This means that you need at least 2,500 tokens and lock them up for 90 days before you're eligible. If you don't wait so long, then you have to buy 4,000 swap tokens. However, let's just assume you're willing to stake your tokens for 90 days, then the investment is $3,200. If you don't wanna wait 90 days, then you have to cough up $5,000 to get it into the TrustSwap launchpad. Going over the facts, a lot of the projects are guaranteed allocation. However, there are some projects that they call flash launches and they work with a whitelist. The minimum lockup period is seven days. 
staking is required, KYC is required, and there is no interest anymore. In the beginning, they were still giving you interest for locking up your tokens, but this uh, reward program has sadly ended. On average, the allocation size is $150. And it is important to know the allocation size will go up if you lock up more tokens. When it comes to the quality of the tokens, we can scroll down here and then we see all the different launches. In this column, we see the result from the all-time high, just as we saw with Polka Starter and Downmaker. But then we have another interesting column, which is the current price and the current result. As we can see, it is still doing very well on all of its projects. So the first page is everything still green with the worst one, a uh, 4x. Then on the last page, we see that everything is still green as well. So the worst performing still gave you a 20% up. And if you would have sold it at the all time high, then you still would have a 4x on your investment. So overall, I think we can say that all the projects that they launch have been of a very good quality. Now looking at the token itself, you still have to do an investment between three and five thousand dollars, which is a lot. Of course, you can always still sell the token. The good news is that 80% is already in circulating supply, so there is not much to be vested when it comes to the swap token itself. The market cap is 100 million, so it's definitely not insane, especially if you know that there is more than just a launch pad, so this project has more to offer. If you want to find out more, be sure to check out my video on Trust Swap. Number two in the guaranteed allocations is Gpool. You need to hold 100,000 tokens in your wallet, so you don't have to stake, you don't have to lock it up. There is no lockup period. Um, there is guaranteed allocation. The minimum investment, however, is $3,000, so it's not cheap. So far, when it comes to the projects, there hasn't been any KYC, which makes this project pretty unique. And because there is no staking, there is no interest as well. However, they did announce a staking program, so you can expect a staking function in the future. When it comes to allocation size, this is also impressive. So on average, it is between $500 and $1,000 and the allocation is fixed. So it doesn't matter if you hold 100,000 of their tokens or 200,000, everybody will get the same allocation. When it comes to the quality of the projects, I'm still a little bit on the fence. However, it is also important to know that they are pretty early in the investment process. All the other launch pads, they are just before the launch. So there's already a lot of hype and this causes the uh, token to shoot up in price and then usually it stabilizes. With Gpool, you are much earlier in the process. So it will take some time for the project to do more promotion and so forth. So the token still has to develop and the price of the token still has to develop as well. So from that sense, it is a little bit more risky. It is not that much history, so we have these uh, these projects. They haven't done insane gains yet, except for the Gpool token itself. However, there are a few upsides as well. The allocations are really sizable, so it's between $500 and $1,000. There is no KYC, and this can be important for some people as well. When it comes to the token, the circulating supply is $350 million total supply is 500 million this means that 70 percent is already in circulation the project itself is pretty small so we have a market cap of 10 million and a fully diluted market cap of 15 million this also means that if gpool is able to attract a very interesting project as an exclusive that the price of gpool will shoot up immediately next we have moon edge this one is on the polygon network it is uh, partnered up with chain boost that we talked about earlier this project, however, has guaranteed allocation. Right now, the cheapest way to get in is $400, so you have to buy 500 of the Moon Edge token. Allocation is guaranteed, minimum lockup is 14 days, staking is required, KYC is required, and there is no interest on the tokens that you stake. Allocation size, on average, is $50, but it is tier-based. So the more tokens that you stake, the higher allocation you will get. When it comes to projects, so far, the list has been pretty short. So we had Forest Knight, Idira, Blockchain Monsters, and of course the Moon Edge token itself. And right now we have Galaxy Fight Club coming up that we also saw on Polka Starter. Now I tried to get into the Blockchain Monster allocation and my allocation here was, I think, $18. So it was really, really low. Um, it was guaranteed allocation, of course, and the investment, quote unquote, is only $400. So yeah, I'm not super convinced with such low allocations, but then again, the membership cost is pretty low as well. Next up, we have Copper Launch. I did like to include this one because this one is completely decentralized. This means there's also no KYC and they work with a Dutch auction system. And recently they made a browse list. But this list has been oh, curated, so to speak. And the other list is uh, completely free. Anyone can put a project on there. So please read this warning because anyone can put 
anything on this launchpad. So probably there are a few scams in this list. So personally, I keep this list closed and I only look at the curated list. So how does it work? You click on a project and then you'll get some more information about the project and then you have the Dutch auction. So basically it starts at a certain price and the more people that want to get in early, the higher the price they will get. If less people are buying, the price will drop. And eventually, if nobody buys, the price will end up for this project, for example, at 45 cents. The interesting thing about Copper Launch is there is no membership. Anyone can get in. So the membership cost is zero. There is guaranteed allocation, of course, as long as the tokens aren't all sold. There is no lockup period. There is no staking required. There is no KYC and so forth. And the allocation, of course, is whatever you want to invest in. Number 12 on our list is Star Launch. This is a little bit of a special one. I think the minimum investment that you have to do is one star token. So right now it's less than $10. So what you have to do is you stake the token and in return for staking the token, you will get the N2H4 token. Now this token itself has no value on the open market, but this is a token that you need to apply to a certain project. So the first thing you have to do is create a vault. Then you have to lock up your tokens and you can choose to stake your tokens without a lock, but then, and this is really strange, the stars that you lock up in their system will decay over time. So this is almost at 1%, so basically after 120 days or something, you will have zero star tokens left. If you wanna avoid this, then you have to stake your tokens for at least 90 days. Next thing you do is go to the project page and there you can assign your N2H4 token. So it's very important you will be burning those tokens. So you have to be really, really careful in which projects that you're going to invest in. Now, just as an example, I have the Monkey Ball project. So we only had four days to stake. I staked $700 worth of tokens that gave me 3.4 of the N2. 2H4 tokens and that gave me $3 of allocation. So yes, it was guaranteed, but it was very, very little. So personally, I would stake a minimum of $1,000 worth of tokens and then hope that the uh, price of the star token doesn't tank, of course. This will give you, I think, enough of the farm token to allocate to a certain project because right now, as you can see, 3.4 of those tokens give you just a few dollars worth of allocation. And personally, I don't think that it's worth locking up your tokens. So yeah, it is an interesting system. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see how this pans out. The last one on the list is CD5 Fund. This one is also 100% focused on blockchain gaming. And I think when it comes to gaming launchpads, this is the biggest one. However, when it comes to investment, it is a lot higher than, for example, Chainboost. So for me, my personal favorite when it comes to gaming launchpads is still Chainboost. So taking a look at the CD5 system, we see that the first tier is 250 S Fund tokens. At current price, that is $3,000. Now, it's very important to know I did put this one in a guaranteed allocation list, but if you have only tier one, then you're also in a whitelisting system, so it's not guaranteed. The first tier is tier two, where you need 1K allocation, and at current prices, that means that you have to invest $12,000 if you want to have guaranteed allocation. Then, of course, the rest of the tiers we're not even going to talk about because those prices are insane. So if you invest in tier two or higher, guaranteed allocation, yes. You have to lock it up for at least seven days. Staking is required, KYC is required, and you will be getting interest on your staking. Scrolling down the medium post, we see that if you lock it up for seven days, you get 5% APY, 14 days, 11, and all the way up to 60 days where you get 55% APY. When it comes to allocation sizes, you can simply click on the previous projects. Let's take this one, for example. So the minimum allocation was uh, one cent and the maximum allocation was $2,600. Of course, it all depends on the tier that you have. And I went over to the uh, Telegram and there on the announcement channel, you're able to see what allocation for which tier was being assigned. Now, the few projects that I checked out on the Telegram announcement channel, on average, if you're in the lowest tier, so in tier one, you'll only be getting an allocation of 10 to $50. So again, it is really low. I think if you do an investment of $12,000 and you're only getting allocations between 50 and $100, I think this is insane. Um, so personally, I think CD5 is uh, overpriced. So taking a look at coin market cap, we see that only 22% is circulating supply. The maximum supply is 100 million. We only have 21 million in circulation. This means that the current market cap is 262 million and the fully diluted market cap is 1.2 billion. Again, I do expect that this token will be coming down, especially as soon as more of the CD5 fund tokens are going to hit the market. 
Additionally, I don't think the investment of $12,000 makes sense if you only get such small allocations. All right, it's time for my conclusion. When it comes to whitelist launch pads, I think Polka Starter and Duck Starter are my favorites. When it comes to the uh, gaming specific launch pads, I think Chain Boost is a no brainer, especially with such a low membership cost. When it comes to guaranteed allocation and you have the time to wait, I do think Trust Swap is interesting. When it comes to lower investments, I think Moon Edge is worth a look. However, the allocations are very low. If you don't want any allocations, you can take a look at Copper Launch, but again, do be careful. Um, I would only take a look at the curated list. And you have to keep in mind that the prices are usually going to be higher than on any of the other IDO platforms. The last one that might be worth your attention is Star Launch. It is a pretty new system, so I don't know if it's going to work really well. And I don't have that many projects on the platform yet. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you think it was useful, please, please, please post a comment, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.